Pat Noonan. As a player, he only missed the MLS playoffs once and has never missed them as an assistant or head coach. Taking FC Cincinnati from a team that only won four games the year before and had finished last every year of their MLS existence and making it to the conference semifinals the very next year with no amazing superstar signings in the offseason. How has Pat Noonan turned FC Cincinnati into an MLS Cup contender in just two seasons? Pat Noonan is loved by FC Cincinnati fans and players for multiple reasons. For one, he wears stuff that is actually straight from the team store, as seen here in this photo of Pat Noonan shopping at the team store. But the more prominent reason is because Pat Noonan is willing to fight for his team. Literally. He once was on the brink of fighting MLS officials after a poorly refereed game against NYCFC. And that helps his success greatly. Pat Noonan is so passionate and hungry to win that as a player or fan you can't help but buy into his philosophy. As a coach, that is the first step. You need all of your players to buy into your coaching, and he has done that with FC Cincinnati. Rookies, All-Stars, and Vets all believe in what Pat Noonan is constructing, and as a result, they want to play for him. Guys like Yuya Kubo or Alec Khan are willing to relinquish their starting spots and not make a big deal about it because they want to play for Pat and believe in what he is building. There is no question about if Pat cares about this team. As a player, having no doubt in your coach's abilities and passion is great. When Pat coaches, they listen, and they want to do good for him. The last thing you want is for a player to disregard your coaching advice, and players usually will do that if they don't respect you or just don't care. But Pat commands the respect of all of his players, making them care. He has built a culture of wanting perfection, and that leads into another thing that makes Pat so good. He demands perfection. For example, after a win over Inter Miami to become the best team in the East and reach that for the first time in franchise history, what does Pat Noonan have to say on the win? Tonight was probably our worst performance, so if you had to watch that, we apologize. Um, <laughs> we, we were just off on so many levels. You know, I, I think our preparation was poor. Um, some guys traveling back in from international duty. We lost Obi late in the week, um, but that starts with me. It was. It was good that we won the game, but it, it was a really uh, below average performance. He apologizes to the fans because it was an ugly win. He doesn't celebrate or brag or anything like that. He immediately focuses on what they can improve on as a team to win a championship. And that is the best mentality to have. If you get too high on becoming the best team in the East or get caught up in winning streaks, then you will fail come playoff time or even sooner. If a team is mentally stronger than you, they will beat you eventually. And Pat does not allow that to happen. Every post-game presser is focused on what they could have done better. Win, lose, or draw, Pat only cares about how they could have improved. But don't get it twisted, he does let his players know when they do a good job. When Lucho and Brandon Vasquez made the all-star team, Pat announced it in front of the whole team. When players make a good play or score, Pat lets them know that they did good. Pat basically makes it an achievement to have him say good job. I can tell you from personal experience that that kind of coaching is like a drug. You feel amazing when that coach says that you did well, and anybody else who's had a coach like that can tell you the same. It's a very fine line though. If you become too brash or make it personal when correcting a player, they will no longer respect you. You need to be fair and not hateful, be respectful but firm. And that's what Pat does and it works amazingly. He demands perfection and probably won't be satisfied until he wins a championship. And all this is good, but it still doesn't really explain how he took a 4 win team that many picked to finish close to last or at best a few spots out of the playoffs and then went on to make the playoffs, let alone win a playoff game. And the credit doesn't all belong to Pat. It partially belongs to FC Cincinnati GM, Chris Albright. Chris and Pat have worked together to make some of the most low risk, high reward signings and transfers you will see. Their first off season, they acquired Alec Khan, longtime Atlanta United backup goalkeeper to be their starter. 
At the worst, he would have been a slight upgrade to Kenneth Vermeer. But at best, he could be an above average MLS starter. They also got Ray Gaddis to come out of retirement and come to FC Cincinnati. Both Pat and Chris knew Ray from their Philadelphia Union days. At the very least, Gaddis would be a good veteran presence who knew how to win. He turned out to be a good wingback and is still in the starting 11 for FC Cincy. Another good acquisition was Dominique Badgie, who at worst would be a decent striker to sub in and score a few goals here and there. And he has been just that for FC Cincinnati, minus the goal scoring. But whenever he goes in, he creates goal scoring opportunities for himself or a teammate and is a great depth piece. In the draft that season with FC Cincinnati's first round pick, they selected Roman Celentano. At first, he was a backup, but once he took over for an injured Alec Khan, there was no looking back, and for the past year and a half, Roman has shown why he is one of the best young goalkeepers in MLS, garnering some US men's national team consideration. With the 14th overall pick, they then selected Ian Murphy, who has turned into a solid young defender and had a good rookie year. His playing time has dropped recently with FC Cincinnati acquiring more defensive talent, but he's still a good young piece to this team. But the acquisitions did not stop once the season got underway. Junior Moreno was acquired from DC United. For just $250,000 in GAM, FC Cincinnati got a midfielder who is still vital to their team right now. Moreno helps FC Cincinnati keep possession of the ball and allows guys like Lucho to do what they do. Add some nice defense and some goals a few times a year and you have another great acquisition by Chris and Pat. But it only gets more ambitious from there. Obina Nuobido was acquired July 8th of 2022 and is a violent defensive midfielder who steals the ball right off the feet of opposing players. He never gives up on a play and is a favorite of any FC Cincinnati fan, player, or coach. Sergio Santos was also brought in for just $300,000 in GAM and has been a chaotic striker for FC Cincinnati. His first year in just 8 appearances, he showed how he could be a super sub for Cincy. Never getting on the score sheet, Sergio still used his speed and dribbling skills to disrupt back lines late in matches. And this year for FC Cincinnati, he scored a few goals and helped them majorly. And finally, to help a struggling backline, Matt Miazga was brought in from Chelsea on a free transfer. Matt has been a great defender and as always physical and passionate, even scoring a few goals. Miazga, like most of the players I mentioned, can still be found helping FC Cincinnati today, some still in the starting 11. This season, Santiago Reyes, Marco Angulo, and Yerson Mascara have all been brought in to help FC Cincinnati. Mascara has helped make Cincy's backline a positive instead of the roller coaster of inconsistencies that it was last year. Cincinnati can now win games with their offense and defense. Now, the attacking trio of Brenner, Brandon Vasquez, and Lucho Acosta were there before Pat Noonan, but it took Pat's scheme to unlock their potential. Pat Noonan and his coaching staff have built something that players want to be a part of, with Chris Albright securing talent through the draft and smart transfers. FC Cincinnati has crawled out of the Eastern Conference basement and has burnt all three wooden spoons they were handed, taking Cincinnati from lovable losers to lovable winners. And they're poised to make an MLS Cup run this season. Pat Noonan will probably never start a post-game presser off with something positive until Cincy wins a championship, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Pat Noonan even has his own nachos at TQL Stadium, Noonan's Nine Layer Nachos. Now that is the mark of a great coach. I'm Limitless Poles, thank you for watching another video, please subscribe for more, I'll see you guys next time.